Hello, my name is Craig J. James and welcome to my channel. It is a Sunday, so another Sunday, another sermon. And in this sermon, I'm going to be talking about baptism and what the purpose of baptism is. Before I start, though, I do have a confession to make. I'm f fat. Yes, there is that, but that's not what I'm here to confess about, even though I am fat. I made, I decided to make myself a chicken pie. Let me rephrase that, right? It's Sunday. So I decided to make myself a Sunday, a Sunday dinner. And I, um, I was looking in the freezer and I found a chicken pie that I bought some time ago. It had gone past the sale by uh, a date, but since it had been fr frozen, it shouldn't cause any harm. So I made myself a chicken pie, but there's only one slight problem. I forgot about it, and I left it too long in the oven. And as you can see, it is burnt to a crisp. <laughs> I just can't cook, you know. I can preach. I can teach from the Bible. I can even drink until I end up in A and E from alcoholic poisoning. But there's one thing I cannot do: is cook. Good job I'm not. A Living with Gordon Ramsay, isn't it? Good job I'm not in his TV program, Hell's Kitchen. He'll end up having a nervous breakdown. And uh, yeah, he'll just go completely at nuts. So, anyway, if anyone has any advice how to cook a chicken pie properly, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Anyway, in Australia, anyway, carrying on, okay, if you have your Bibles with you, we will be going through two scriptures about baptism. I may go through other scriptures as well, depending if the Lord leads me to read other scriptures, right? Now, in the first scripture, we are going to be reading... Ah, uh, from from um, um, Matthew chapter twenty eight, from verse eighteen to verse twenty. Okay, so that's the the book of um, Matthew chapter twenty eight, from verse eighteen to verse twenty. And here I am reading from the original. King James Version. So, Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to verse 20. And these are the words of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So what Christ here is basically saying is to be Baptize first, and then go and uh, go therefore and teach all nations. Yes, he goes so right. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and then teaches all nations. Now, in the next um, uh, a book of the New Testament. We shall be going to St. Mark in chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. 
So that Saint, that is the gospel according to Saint Mark, chapter one, from verse one to verse four. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets: Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now, baptism itself doesn't save you. Okay, and just you know, I think there's a, a a lot of Christians out there who are misconcepted, who are yeah, who are um, um, who are misconcepted about what baptism actually is. Baptism itself doesn't save your soul from hell. Only the belief. In Jesus Christ alone saves your soul from hell. St. Paul says this in Romans 10. If you confess with your lips and confess with your heart that Christ alone died on the cross for you, then you are saved. It's somewhere along those lines, yeah? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to... Okay, perhaps I will then I'm talking about it. Right, okay. I told you. I told you I may be reading other scriptures, didn't I? Romans 10, right? In verse 9, I believe, yes. Okay, yeah. So in Romans 10, from verse, from verse 9 to verse 10, it says this. That is Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to verse 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy m- 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 mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For within the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so it's the confession and it's, and it's the pure belief in your heart and in your soul that Christ died for you. So what is the purpose of baptism? Baptism is the symbolic religious rite that, symbol, that symbolizes that you have died to your old self, you become a new creation and that you you don't sin any more. So, in other words, you're standing in water, right? There are at least two other Christians there who, who are ready to dunk you in the water. Before you get dunked into the water, or sometimes you kneel and water gets sprinkled onto your head. That way you can also be baptised. But most people tend to get dunked in. Okay, so right. So, before you get dunked in, you're still the old self, right? You are still the old self. You then get dunked into the water. You get cleansed of your sins. And as you rise up again, you are now the old self no more. You have died to the old self. Now you deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Or him, right? 
you now live for Jesus Christ. Even though, as I said, baptism itself doesn't save you. This is why I think it's wrong for babies to be baptised. Why? Baptism is only for Christians. Baptism is only for believers. A baby, how can a newborn baby or a baby that is only a few weeks old be a Christian? They aren't even aware of themselves, you right? They haven't, they have not yet grown up enough to develop a conscience. But this is what has happened with 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 man's tradition in the Christian church, especially in Roman Catholicism and in Anglicanism, right? Parents tend to think that for the baby to be saved, they have to be baptised. No. A baby still goes to heaven if they die, God forbid, right? That's this why keep away f- to any parents out there especially new parents stay away stay away from lucy let be as far as you possibly can so this is what baptism is and i do have another confession i never actually said this and i'm about to say it yesterday i finally got baptized this has been a, a long time coming, and I have finally been baptised. And since I've been baptised, there has been a change in me, right? Because when you also get baptised, right, you die to your old self. You are now a new creation in Christ, right? Your, your sins have been washed away. So now I feel, because I've made that commitment to God the Father through Jesus Christ by being baptised, I feel I cannot live the way that I did before. Because now, right, it was bad before I got baptised. But now... I can't, because I know for a fact, right, I've because I've made that utter commitment to die to myself, to follow him, if I now fall back into sin, the Lord is really going to chastise me and convict me and things for me could get a whole lot worse beyond anyone's comprehension. Because now... That commitment has been done. Now, that commitment has been f- fulfilled. So, yeah, I'll read again in M- Mark chapter 1. But but this time, I'll just read from verse 4, okay? So, Mark chapter 1, verse 4. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Baptized of repentance for the remission of sins. You know, and that calls to me. You know, I can't explain it because it's, you know, it's a supernatural spiritual experience that I had as soon as I came out of that, of that water. If I go, if I now, it was bad enough before, yeah? But if I now go back to living the way I was and you lot know what that is, yeah? All I will be doing is dragging Christ's name through the mud and spiritually nailing him back to the cross. 
which is not setting a good example to living the Christian life, is it? See, being a Christian is more than just believing in God. Being a Christian is more than just believing that Jesus died for you on on that piece of on a piece of wood at Calvary 2000 years ago. No, it's a complete and utter change. It's a way of life. Even if that means me burning more chicken pies, right? It's still a way of life. And I've now made a commitment to serve him. Now, even Jesus Christ himself was baptised. And as soon as he was baptised, a white dove descended from heaven and flew on him. Here we are. Another scripture has come to me. Again, back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. I'm getting there eventually. Okay, well, it's in chapter 3 somewhere. I can't find the verse, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Um, it's because uh, we're here to talk. Uh, you know, I've already said we had to say, but in chapter three somewhere, and I'm not going to just read all the way through because it'll, it'll take up time. And I didn't plan of reading Matthew chapter three any any way, but. I will say this as well. I don't know if you can see this. See this bit? That is a symbol. That is a statue of Jesus Christ. It says, Jesus, I trust in you. Now, as you can see, right, there's... A blue uh, stripe coming from him and a red stripe coming from him. Now, what does this represent? It both represents life. The blue is the water and water is the giver of life. We cannot live and sustain life without a water. And the red is blood. His pressure, his precious blood, his pure, sinless, precious blood that was spilt to pay for our sins on the on the cross, as it says in Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty-two. Without the spilling of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. If we turn to 1 John, w 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. Ready for this? All right. 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. Actually, we will read from verse 6 to verse 7. So that is 1 John chapter 5 from verse 6 to verse 7. This is he that came by water and blood. Yeah? This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, 
the Word and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Oh, hello. I got a spider. If people are scared of spiders, you may not want to see this. Go on. Off we go. Oh, there's a web there. Go on then. You gone? Don't like it. kill it, see? Why kill it? It deserves to exist just as we do. I don't care how scared of spiders you are. So, yes, okay? So that's what it says. This is he that came by water and blood. The water and the blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only. But by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness. Because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So what's that got to do with baptism? Well, baptism is a water, isn't it? You get baptised in water. The water is a symbolisation of what Christ did on the on the on the cross as what it says here in 1 John. Okay, thank you for watching, thank you for l listening. Please don't hesitate to hit that like button. Please don't hesitate to share and like this uh, uh, video. Please, you know, I mean, and that can be on any social networking site. And uh, please continue to pray for, for, for me and my uh, ministry. Please pray for a sister in Christ who has recently lost her husband. I'm not going to be mentioning any names because it's a sensitive topic. And please continue to pray for my father's physical healing and most importantly for his salvation. Thank you all and to my brothers and sisters in Christ. If I do not get to see you in this lifetime, I shall see you all in our Father's kingdom. Amen.